Hi, I'm Chris Hardwick. You are watching and or listening to Geek Speak Show. They're listening. You're consuming. You're watching it with your ears. Oh, you just listen. You are just listening to the Geek Speak Show. We're back. Like I said last week, and I teased it a little bit at the beginning of the show, let's talk conspiracies. There is one, there's a lot of conspiracies out there, but there's one that I found out about uh, just uh, early in, earlier this year, which is, what, three weeks ago? Still pretty new. Uh, and that is something that's right up our alley. You guys all love the paranormal stuff when we talk about it. Our Halloween shows are always the most downloaded shows. It's not Halloween. It's not even close to October. Not Yeah, not even close to it. But here we're going to do something scary because, you know, like I say all the time, Halloween is my favorite time of the year. We It's like our, my Christmas to me. We celebrate it here all year long. So let's kick it off now. This is something pretty interesting, actually. It's uh, the reason why I call it a conspiracy is because it's there's a lot of secrecy behind it. it, it it's a it's a it's a big cover up. We think maybe we don't know. It's it's called the third. It was something called the third shift. And uh, I, I was going to explain it to you, but I happen to have somebody on the phone. I'm going to put him through a filter so you're not going to recognize his voice. He he calls himself K five. He's got some inside knowledge on what's uh, Project Idolon, and so let's get him on and get, find out what 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 the hell I am talking about. So, K5, welcome to the Geek Speak Show. Thank you. Good day. Thanks for coming on, first of all. I know it's a big risk for you coming on the show, so thank you for coming on. <clears throat> My pleasure. This is an important message. Like I said, uh, I was going to explain it to them, but since you have inside knowledge, why don't you tell everybody what, what is or was Project Eidolon? Project Eidolon was essentially devised as a sort of baby blanket for CIA brass who were uh, fearful that rival nations were investigating and developing the weaponization of paranormal phenomena. Uh, it ends up being essentially a psychic warfare idea revived from the Cold War. Uh, a CIA director decided to deploy three soldiers uh, with a high-tech surveillance camera called the Fiend Camera and sent them on a mission to verify or disprove paranormal activity at a handful of hot spots around the western United States. Now, there's a lot of, you know, like the ghost hunter shows and the, those kind of paranormal shows around. So, you know, at, when people first hear about this, they're like, oh, it's another one of those reality shows. But wh- why why was this a military operation? Well, why, did they, why did you have military people behind it rather than just have, you know, paranormal investigators go out and investigate? This project is essentially a CIA project that utilized military personnel for their specific skills. And you did send me a few things that um, I don't know if you were supposed to or not to, but uh, we'll just say you sent me a little, a little bit of information about Project Eidolon. From what I understand, they, were, they weren't expecting any success, but you know, if, if that was the case, why, why even start a project when, when you don't expect any success out of it? The, the project was created to essentially prove a negative to get the idea out of people's minds that there was any sort of paranormal phenomenon out there and allow the powers that be in the CIA to redirect funding into pet weapons and surveillance projects. There were a couple of higher-ups who had gotten it in their minds that paranormal activity and uh, psychic warfare were viable, uh, exploitable ideas and that several other countries were using this technology or this this phenomenon um, and we're going to uh, create political advantage with uh, with that information. And Project Eidolon was created just to go out and prove once and for all that no such thing exists and uh, clear up any uh, questions or misconceptions. Okay, and, and when did the CIA start, start getting pictures and realizing that, hey, they're actually getting real evidence? The Fiend camera captures such massive amounts of information from so many data streams simultaneously that the operators of the camera are operating blind. The, the data that is captured needs to be collated and processed by a massive mainframe to create usable images that we can actually see. This process can take weeks or months depending on the amount and complexity 
city of the data that is recorded in the event of Project Eidolon, the image analysis team in Quantico didn't actually start seeing fully rendered images until uh, December 12th of 2002. That's the same day that Project Eidolon was suddenly terminated. Now, you mentioned the uh, the reason why the, the Project Eidolon was, was started for, for political reasons, but you know, looking at, at the world and the, and the public at large, why hide evidence of an afterlife? And don't you think that would change people's minds about how they see just the world or other events? Many of the, the individuals responsible for deploying Project Eidolon are publicly, devoutly religious people who indeed believe in one version or another of an afterlife. The trouble is that no one's ever recorded any truly convincing photographic evidence of that idea. Everyone involved expected Project Eidolon to be a quiet, uh, even tedious mission. No one in power expected any proof of anything at all. Just a safe, prudent dry run for the fiend camera and a nice quiet mission for three battle-tested soldiers. Okay, and, and I don't know if you can get into these details, but can you give me their, their name, the names of the three soldiers that went out there and, and what, what happened to them, if you know? I sure can. The three soldiers were Lieutenant Colonel Joseph Miller uh, from the United States Marine Corps, Sergeant Edward Martinez from the United States Army, and Specialist William Clark from the United States Marine Corps, each of them having uh, special surveillance skills um, from their uh, uh, combat deployments. And to this day, we don't know exactly what happened to them? They just disappeared? We don't know, but we have theories, and we have, you know, we have mounting evidence that the three are still alive. We have some uh, surveillance camera footage that would indicate that Edward Martinez um, may still be alive, and um, we have one couple in particular that seems to, to show his pickup being driven uh, um, through the field, through the a field of several security cameras. We have some garbled cell phone calls, a couple of encrypted text messages, um, a, a dormant credit card that belonged to Specialist William Clark was um, reactivated from a foreign country, uh, and we it's fair to assume that only he would have the knowledge necessary to reactivate that credit card. Uh, some hotel purchase or hotel stays were paid for with that credit card. No one knows definitively whether these soldiers are alive. We only know that they're they're trusted and respected veterans that appear to have gone into hiding, and we keep uh, we keep discovering um, small pieces of evidence that would indicate that they're alive and on the run. Have any of the higher ups from Project Eidolon have they said? Anything that, yeah, they, they, they're alive or have they contributed to the proof that's out there? Uh, they, they have, from the very beginning, dismissed the entire idea of Project Eidolon um, as, a, you know, as a myth or a legend. Um, they've acknowledged the existence of these three soldiers, um, but have avoided any further questions, and stating just uh, you know, general or vague mission secrecy. So they'll acknowledge that these three soldiers exist or existed, but they won't. They don't acknowledge Project Adelon, and they won't discuss where these three soldiers are deployed, whether they're alive or dead, um, whether the CIA has any further concern with them. So, K5, what what do you hope to do? What do you hope to accomplish by making this knowledge public that the, the three soldiers are actually still alive? Well, I, uh, speaking for myself and ostensibly on behalf of the third shift community. We wish to protect these brave soldiers and honor them for their service. And secondly, the world to see the images that were captured by the third shift and the story of their mission. This is Mark Zigby, writer, producer, and director of Space Command, and you're listening to the Geek Speak Show. Ladies and gentlemen. Hey everybody, we are back with the Geek Speak show and today we are talking to Ed Raker. He is the creator slash publisher of The Third Shift Story, um, which you can take a look at all the cool stuff they have, which uh, includes uh, a book that you can download into your iPads or iThings 
uh, and a calendar. And that's at thirdshiftconspiracy.com. So, Ed, welcome to the show. Hi, guys. Thank you very much for having me. Anytime. So I got to take a look uh, actually at the story on my iPad, which looks amazing, um, and the calendar that you happen to have on the website. So Thank tell you. me why you went with the calendar, um, other than like a movie or something else crazy. The calendar image, uh, the calendar idea was a way to display images in a large format in a way that people use every day. And I like the idea of being able to extend a story throughout the year. Uh, the calendar is good for that. And That's true. I would, I'd love to make a movie, but I'm a little short on financing. Um, it's uh, significantly less expensive to make a calendar than to gather many millions of dollars and convince people to, uh, to make a movie. But, you know, um, the future's unwritten. We could see a third shift movie someday, but right now a calendar is a good way to get the project into a lot of people's hands and uh, start growing that story world. And the calendar has a lot of the pictures that are actually in the story itself, um, which are pretty cool, by the way. So you guys should all take a look at it. Um, so I, I was looking through them uh, in the story, uh, and I wanted to know if you guys went on location um, to take those pictures or if you guys built a lot of it in 3D or had a set for it. Tell me about how you created those. It was all done on location, and the locations were chosen on a handful of different, for a handful of different reasons. Um, one was, are they creepy? Um, I did a lot of research to find abandoned buildings and interesting places with creepy or haunted or paranormal stories behind them. And secondly, we needed to be able to get access safely and legally. And uh, third, um, I needed to look at images of the location and feel confident that I could write a story um, that that would fit appropriately with the location. Yeah, I, when I was looking through, actually, some of them, some of them are like really creepy, like like in the book where some of the kids actually had like night terrors from these, <laughs> and some <laughs> some of them make you like want to stare at them longer. So, did you actually come up with the stories behind each one of those? I did. A couple of the stories were inspired by. Um, the you know the mythology of a given location the uh, um, the young woman who is floating above a path near the uh, Palace Verde's lighthouse the Point Vicente lighthouse was right. inspired by the fact that there are multiple stories of uh, ghostly diaphanous women um, you know making their uh, haunted appearances at that location. That's awesome. I know that there's a lot of stories we were talking about actually at Halloween, um, all the different places that we've all been and all the crazy stuff that happens. So I like that you actually tied it into something that really has existed in our world. Great. It was a, it was a, an amazing adventure to go to all these places. I saw so much more of Los Angeles and the Western United States with this project than I would have seen without it. Well, and so another cool thing I thought you did actually is is in the book. So if you guys go to the thirdshiftconspiracy.com, there's a package where you can get the story and the calendar and then you get those 3D glasses and then some of those pictures actually become 3D when when you're wearing the glasses of course. Uh, that that's pretty awesome and it should make it creepier, right? Right. And the the 3D aspect was just an idea. It was a method to make the story more immersive. Um, I um, had been having some discussions with a couple of buddies of mine who are uh, conspiracy buffs and who were regular viewers of some, uh, uh, let's say, paranormal-based reality shows. And their complaint was always that the payoff was never there in those in those shows about tracking down ghosts and haunts and so on. And I said to them that I was going to make make it my mission to deliver a collection of images that actually rewarded people with uh, real ghost images rather than uh, sounds that were just off camera and. Um, you know, floating dust orbs and so forth. I wanted people to be able to really experience some immersive uh, ghost story uh, rather than um, than uh, leaving disappointed. And and I think that's actually a great way to do that. 
So we're talking to Ed Raker, everyone, uh, creator, publisher of Third Shift 3D Calendar, uh, which you can find on thirdshiftconspiracy.com, of course, or in the link section uh, on our website. So the, the calendar that you have going on now, um, that's for 2013, correct? Yes, correct. Okay, so what are we looking at for 2014? We've explored a handful of different ideas. Um, they all continue the story of the third shift. Uh, we've got one that we're, that we're, let's say that we're paying a lot of attention to right now and that we're exploring with um, some additional creative types. Um, it's all in the works and I wish I could say more. Um, I'll reveal this one uh, bit and that is that um, there is evidence in the third shift world that there is a second fiend camera out there and that um, it's possible that another group of interested parties have obtained that second fiend camera and gone on their own mission and that might be part of the 2014 calendar hey Ed, it's henry how you doing Oh, hey. So, so I have the calendar actually here in my hands. It's in the studio, and I can't get Joel and everybody else away from it. it, it it's, a, it's a distraction here, a good distraction, though. Um, <laughs> but let me go back to the – you mentioned the story. When you were writing the story, did, did you plan you know, beyond just what we see in the, in the e-book and in the calendar? Did you plan even beyond that? Like, like you just mentioned right now, the second Fiend camera. Is, is there anything uh, – is there a big old story, basically, so that, so that you can have follow-ups? Yes, there there is there is a second chapter to this story, but that second chapter came about about halfway through the development of the first chapter. Um, as I began to share, you know, the as I began to share the project with uh, you know trusted creatives and friends, um, I realized that if the first chapter was a success, that I needed to have plans for where I was going to go with the second chapter. And I began writing that right away so that I'd have a really clear creative direction. Who helps you on the calendar? I mean, with the, the photographs and everything, who's, who's behind yeah. the scenes with you? There have been a ton of just incredibly creative, helpful people involved um, that start with my uh, beloved and supportive wife, Amy, and then uh, literally too many people to mention. Um, all the actors uh, in the photographs are friends. Many of them are working professional actors or models. Um, a couple are just regular Joes like me that happened to understand the concept and were surprisingly comfortable in front of the camera and were willing to go to weird, creepy, or unusual locations. Besides, besides doing shows like this, how else are you getting the word out about the calendar? I've been, um, I've been on the long, steep learning curve of social media, which is, you know, as yeah, of right there with it, it's fairly new to me. Um, I've mailed out a lot of calendars to a lot of people. Uh, we've got a couple of contests in the works. Um, I've attended some paranormal functions, um, you know, where I asked ahead of time if I could show up and share my project and solicit people's ideas and feedback. And it's really, really grassroots. Um, it's a slower process than I imagined, but it's much, much more rewarding than I knew it would be. You know, don't feel too bad about just jumping on the social media. Rachel can attest to this. I'm <laughs> just, I just got a smartphone. Okay, I'm right. dragging him along, kicking and screaming. Great. Well, you know what? I'm still not there. I, I, I have an iPad that I use extensively, but I have resisted the smartphone, but I know it's in my very, very near future as well. I'm actually getting kind of spoiled with it. Oh, I got to be honest. Uh, it, it's making me a little bit lazy, to be, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, it's a pretty powerful distraction. If it could cook and do the laundry, hey, I'm set. Well, then I, I own one already. <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're, we're talking to Ed Raker. He is the, uh, the creator, the publisher of the Third Shift Conspiracy 3D Calendar. It's on our link section. You guys can go on there or go directly there, Third Shift Conspiracy dot com um, have you thought about it have you thought about uh, taking it to the conventions uh, you're in the uh, southern california yeah. area, i'm assuming i'm I, I have been part of this project has been based in southern california and part of it has been based in minneapolis i'm in minneapolis as we speak um i have thought about going to the conventions but i think that 
conventions um, will more likely be a part of the 2014 calendar because it's um, nearing the end of January and calendar purchases begin to evaporate about now. Yeah. Uh, so I'll continue promoting the story and adding additional content and so forth. But the uh, no one wants a, a 2013 calendar in July. So I, I will That's be doing point. the summer uh, convention tour. Yeah, which, which unfortunately you're you're right, and I say unfortunately because you know this is perfect for October for you know my favorite time of the year, Halloween. But like you said, you know they don't want to buy a a calendar they can use for what two three months, and then that's right. It. Right. Exactly. Well, they and, keep looking at the pictures, though. That those are pretty cool. And the third shift conspiracy ebook will be re-released in about two months uh, with a more novelized version, and that'll be available on Amazon and iBooks and so forth. Okay. Oh, I'm excited for that. And I, I will make sure that you get complimentary copies on the very first day. Thank you for that. Yes. Thank you very much. All right, guys, so if you're looking for scary pictures, interested in paranormal stuff whatsoever, and a good story, then Ed Raker's got it, thirdshiftconspiracy.com, or the links page on our website. You need to make sure to check it out. Yeah, and Ed, do, do keep in touch. Whatever, whatever happens, any updates you have, we'll get you on, and we'll talk about them on the show. I will, and thank you so much for your interest. Thank you for your great podcast. I really appreciate it. You guys are great fun. Yeah, and thanks again for sending us the calendar. We all, like I said, it's a very fun distraction here in the studio. <laughs> uh, I'll send a couple more so that you can distract some more people. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, maybe not Joe. We can't get him on the show as it is. So maybe <laughs> not Joe. So, but uh, again, Ed Raker, thanks a lot for coming on. You're welcome back anytime. Like I said, let, let us know what's going on with the, the calendar and any follow-ups yes. to the third shift. Thanks, Henry. Thanks, Rachel. And as you always Thank say, you, Ed. remember the third shift. Okay. Bye-bye.